What's up everybody, this is Esports Machina coming back from a bit of a break. Last video had a bit of a drama, but um, now we're back talking about something totally different. So I made a bit this video roughly five, six months ago, which was titled, Will Esports Keep Growing? And in this video, I did talk about certain false narratives that some people in the mainstream media and inside esports were talking about. Oh, or how they were portraying like how the esports industry will have more and more money in it and it's going to be, become bigger on a yearly yearly basis and will just keep growing which is disingenuous by the way and I'm going to tell you why because the industry always been heavily reliant on them the games themselves so making a perfect esports game is super hard okay first of all it has to be fun game that you like or fun or challenging game and it has to be a good game it's a big great game and even if it's a great game if nobody knows about it that's a problem so it has to have publicity it has to have a big player base so preferably free to play or very low price like rocket league or csgo so roughly under twenty dollars or um, it just has to have like sell a lot of copies like Starcraft or Overwatch did or Call of Duty. And then not only that, um, you have to keep updating the game so it will stay fresh. And there are very few exceptions of games like um, Melee, Melee, Smash Melee is essentially the only one that hasn't been pretty much patched um, since its beginning and it's still being played after all these years. And then the last thing is, as I said, you have uh, the patching is important, and that keeps the people inside the game. But the the cold fact is, with any type of a game, this is not just esports. With all of these big games like League of Legends, Overwatch, Call of Duty, CS:GO, um, Rust, or you know any type of game that is um, mainstream. Um, it usually has these people which I call posers, okay? And posers don't really care about the game, they don't care about the community, they are just there because everybody else is. And they sometimes dictate how the game will do because they will go with the general consensus like, oh, is the game bad right now or is it good? And they can sometimes ruin or make games great, okay? And they are a bit of a problem because you can see that StarCraft 2, for instance, had better numbers back in the day. But because StarCraft 2 wasn't anymore the hot thing, the posers left for the next game, which was essentially League of Legends. And then they have pretty much split on to different games uh, since then and still aren't watching League. And that is kind of like the poser way of thinking of just moving to the next big thing always. And sometimes that can be rather destructive in certain senses. But this is how really world works. And that, you know, applies to music and other things, obviously. And But this is the point of the title of the video. We can finally get into it in three minutes. Is that fighting game community and their games have been one of the most consistent communities with not having really posers or these artificial people or superficial people as a basis of the community and the fighting game community has a lot of grassroots stuff it has a lot of these small events which are done on somebody's house and you know sometimes hotels are rented and people will go to these events you have you know Evo and Genesis and a lot of other, um, I always keep fucking forgetting the names, sorry about that. Um, but definitely like a um, lot of grassroots level. And the thing is because the communities are like a bit older and they have been playing the games for a long time, they're also sticking around for a very long time, which means that these people who watch Melee has probably watched Melee for a very, very long time. And that's type of uh, the community and the system the fighting game scene essentially is that it will have the most consistent viewership out of the all games in terms of loyalty throughout the years. And there's a lot of games that tended to perform really well at certain point of time and then they're not doing that anymore. I do say that like there are other games that have hardcore communities. StarCraft 2 still has a loyal community that still keep watching the scene even though the production value or the money or certain stuff elements are not there anymore. And 
going back in to what I talked about on the previous video is the fact that the games that are pushed out today, we have League of Legends, the numbers have been plateauing, um, and the game doesn't really have uh, new areas where they could open up servers and bring up new potential viewers, such as, well, Africa is open, but that's not going to be anything like big and probably not going to open a server there at all. And that is a good example. Overwatch, people have been hyping it a lot. It has sold many million copies, but it has a very, very poor conversion rate. And the problem is, it's not really great to watch. It really isn't great to watch. It has a lot of other things. It has, you know, one of my favorite casters, Monty and Doa, D-Man, a lot of talented people working in the scene. Then you have all these cool storylines where you have these ex-Quake players, ex-Team Fortress players, ex-League players, all these great storylines inside the game coming to play Overwatch. But still, it's, it's just not working for me at all. I really try to. I really try to get into it, and I don't really know what, what doesn't necessarily click. It might be that I'm not be um, generally very interested in watching FPS in general, but um, I do watch it. Maybe uh, Halo is not that bad to watch, to be honest. But um, this just kind of come, goes to my point that Overwatch is one of those games that are really being sold as this like new fucking esports empire. That now you got all these like uh, big teams from like real real sports coming in to have an Overwatch team, even from my country, the biggest um, football organization pitched in, and they have a team, and they have like big sponsors, big tech. One of the biggest tech companies in our country is sponsoring them, and uh, and even battery uh, energy drinks. So you got like a lot of things behind it, but the viewership is not there. The viewership is not there. It's not. Um, they did pretty poorly at last BlizzCon. Granted, their format was pretty bullshit, but it was still like 100k peak. That's not very good, especially when this wasn't like streamed on other platforms or coming on TV and all across the world. I don't know about China and Korea. Maybe it did. But for the most part, maybe those people watched from Twitch. So the numbers were not, not very good for a game that sold like 50 million copies, was it? And probably more by now. And, um, and the, it doesn't... Um, it is just a really like good example of that um, disingenuous narratives that people are pushing that Overwatch is going to be the next big thing. Um, aside from the money, there's no other like real data on that. The viewers are not there to you know validate the money that's coming in by these big big organizations. And Blizzard probably thought that this game, they didn't think, they didn't build the game as to be an esports title because they really fucked up on the viewership thing. And now we can finally move back to the fighting game thing. The good thing about the fighting games is, unlike MOBAs and strategy games, you need some knowledge about the races and the picks. Um, you don't need to know the move moveset or the damage output of each combo in Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or Smash to really understand what's going on. You see the health part, it's green and then it goes red and then it's over and then you see like the rounds and all that and you know it's a very simple thing to follow. It's very simple thing to follow and it has pretty cool people on the scene. You have a lot of grassroots as I talked about earlier and I think that's gonna be really the success because it's only probably the only scene that has proper grassroots level where people are organizing um, events. Then you have the Capcom tour. Then you have the Evo Evo opening opening on Japan. And I think fighting games is gonna be the thing. If I would if there's an esports investor like listening right now, or if I was one. I would probably invest in the fighting game community because that's the one that's going to be giving you the viewing numbers consistently throughout the years. I think it's Smash Melee is still like breaking numbers and you know it go a 10 year old game when it came in 2006 or 2005 I think. No earlier than that probably. I, I can't remember right now but um, essentially over 10 years and this game like it was last year that it would peaked over 100k on some of the streams that's, that's fucking insane mate and now it's getting its re-release on the virtual console which might be another good thing so you have a better resolutions 
for that game um, on that new machine and maybe some other tweaks on the game, perhaps better graphics or better frame rate. We don't know that yet, um, but for the most part, um, and even Nintendo is not really involved and still it's pretty big. Um, with these other games, developers Riot is Valve and Blizzard all are very involved and <laughs> they kind of have the same numbers, 100k, right? Um, that's what they hit on uh, some of their tournaments. I mean, LCS general numbers are 100k and Overwatch doesn't even get 100k. It probably gets like 20, 30k for their tournaments. And I do think that um, fighting game community, my point of the video, I'm kind of my side railing right now and keep repeating myself, but due to being very easy to watch and will be very easy to sell, even on TV, the fighting game community, that's going to be where um, the money is going to, not really the money, but the consistency is going to be. And I, I really am very, very doubtful that there will be a game because League of Legends coming out in any time of future that could like compete um, with the viewer numbers the League has received throughout the years and top those results. I just don't see that happening. I really don't see that happening. And I think all the other games, um, Overwatch probably hasn't peaked yet, but other games in the scene right now, Dota 2, CSGO, League of Legends, their peaks has been met. I think fighting games, um, now you have bigger organizations coming more in. Obviously, um, Echo Fox did a big signing with Justin Wong, Momochi, Tokido, Sonic Fox, and MK Leo. Um, and I think they are in the money right now in terms of what to do in the scene right now. I think that's that's really um, kind of like where uh, I would put fighting games on the TV as well. I think this would be the best game to pick up for Turner. Um, it gives you extreme. So let's go back into review things that are really good about fighting games. One is obviously that is... You don't need to play the game in order to understand it, okay? Not You don't need to understand the deeper level to enjoy the fighting game experience. Two is that it's a 1v1 always, for the most part, 99% of the time. Uh, Smash has 2v2 tournaments, but for the most part, it's 1v1. So accessibility is really easy. You don't have to form a five-man team and then go to lands and then start up a team and shit like that. That can be really hassle. And there has been a void for 1v1 games right now outside from StarCraft. And this is going to be that game that's going to be filling that gap, in my opinion or these games essentially. And then obviously like running the events probably is gonna be much easier because you don't really need to bring on multiple computers. Um, well, obviously you have to bring out a lot of consoles or depending on if you run it on PC and stuff like that. And then there's obviously, you know, very interesting play styles that people can, because people can have their own controllers. Some use an Xbox controller, some use Steam controller. And then they use those old um, boom, boom, what are boom box? No, that's not somewhere to word. I boom stick, I think. Fuck, man, I gotta correct that later. But it's just the best thing in terms of always also the time. So the problem with I have with CSGO, for example, it's just too many, fuck, too many fucking rounds, man. Like, it's just too long games. The long games can go too long. And with this sort of a, like a system where you can essentially have like two minute rounds or even less than that, and you're able to set time limits into these tournaments, this is like the perfect system to control the screen time on TV and just keep the incitement. And because it will be from the, the first second, it will be all on impact. It's like boxing and kickboxing. It's all on fight. There's no pussying like in soccer where people just stand back on the fucking field and don't touch the ball in the whole fucking game. That happens. Um, it has that impact on it. And then it has a lot of personalities who are very interesting. And I would say, I would say, maybe this is a generalization, but I think a lot of the fighting game icons and people are a lot more interesting than people that I'm seeing in the other esports. That is the the personal anecdote, but maybe some people can argue with that. Um, and I really, I really, you know, a good example is the the Smash documentary. Um, that was really good. I'm really looking forward to the Armada one. But um, it's just, uh, it just I th that's what I think. And I, we're going to see in a year from now, was I wrong? Was I, was I right? Obviously, the newest Street Fighter, they had a bit of a messy release, and that kind of affected 
the fighting game community, but they always gonna play the last version of the game. Obviously, that's the, what they always can do, and they don't care about graphics. That's a good thing about this community as well. They don't give a fuck about graphics. The game doesn't have to be new to them. They doesn't need patches. They will fucking keep playing that stuff for the next twenty years. That's how they you know see it as, and that's how they work. And Smash even has like this crazy long, you know, lifespan and a lot of rich storylines. And it will keep going on. Melee will keep going on, especially with the Virtual Console release. That's going to be huge. And it's just, um, I'm going to be more invested probably on fighting games. And I'm going to be watching probably some of them like more. And I want to get into it more because right now, um, um, I haven't been very excited about the other games right now. Just sorry. I really would want to see a new RTS game coming into the scene, uh, Blizzard could always do a HD version of Warcraft 3. That game could be, like, really fucking big. It could be bigger than StarCraft. Warcraft 3 sold more than StarCraft 2. Let's remember that. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'm still to kind of... I'm really happy for the fighting game community. You guys have done great things. There has been great content creators. There has been great events. Um, EVO is getting better, more grassroots stuff. That's great. And I'm getting more invested in that scene i'm not bandwagoning i'm not saying that i'm a poser and i'm coming into the scene because it's getting big no it's not big yet it's gonna be big i'm probably bigger now or at least stay consistent but i'm just coming in because you know it's natural probably the best game to follow um because it has a lot of events going on on a weekly basis but um kind of summarize my thoughts finally fucking finally dude when this guy will fucking shut up um the current situation of the esports field is not set. We have to be extremely careful. If Overwatch fails and League keeps plateauing, there won't be anyone to fill that space. Um, and I don't think anybody like those those games will start like, oh, we're gonna jump into the fighting games or racing games or fucking watch FIFA. It's not gonna happen like that. Um, they're just gonna go disappear into. In the thin air, they're gonna vanish. They're gonna just stop watching esports probably until something really fucking big comes up again. And Riot Games is even working on their new um, fighter game, and I don't know why. Essentially, um, they did the acquirement, but um, there hasn't been really yet um, a lot of those free-to-play fighting games, and that can be really the next step and the key of the access, next level accessibility. And in, in, in terms of that possibility, there could be that game. It, Rising Thunder didn't really touch me on it. Maybe it could have been patched and maybe it could become better eventually. But um, that was a free-to-play game. And um, essentially, there is that space open for that free-to-play fighting game, which could be the next big thing. And the cool thing also about the fighting games, you know, the EVO events, is that there are many games and there's not like this fucking retarded like um, rivalries with the fucking companies on EVO. Whereas in like in IEM, you can't have League of Legends and Dota 2 on the same fucking event. You have to put um, Dota into ESL, uh, um, ESL 1, which is fucking dumb. Um, and that's what I kind of like about there's a bit of a harmony there. Uh, obviously, there are some of these things that some fighting game communities, you know, believe that Smash... Uh, it was a bit of a joke, but, you know, I get that. But, you know, it's, it's for the better right now. And I'm going to wrap this video right now. Um, and stay tuned for more content. I'm working on a few videos. And let's hope that there are going to be some cool-ass fucking new games in esports. And um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we have to fall down to the fighting game community. Not at all. But I do hope there's going to be offerings for a different type of genres which hopefully will not be that uh, FPS because I do believe that they're not perhaps the perfect viewing, spectating um, sport. And thanks for watching this video. Would appreciate subscribing, but it's optional. It's optional. It's up to you. Unlike or comment. Um, giving. I'm taking recommendations like which are really cool fighting game communities to follow. Obviously, um, there's smaller ones like Schoolgirls, which I've been playing a lot. Um, that's a good game. But um, yeah. No, no, I'm going to talk no longer. See you guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon.